Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. We're here at Juggernaut Training Systems and uh, graciously hosted by Chad Wesley Smith himself. I'm Dr. Mike Israel of Renaissance Periodization. And his, here's the old ball and chain, the boss, <laughs> Nick Shaw himself. And this video is for all of you wonderful, awesome RP clients of ours. We're doing a cool little Q&A session for some common questions that have been posted on our Facebook group because today or just last week, uh, right? Recently. Like just last week. Re last so. week yeah. uh, on the RP Clients Facebook group, we have surpassed 20,000 followers or 20,000 members, which is a really, really big deal. And uh, we're all we're just super gracious to have all of you guys a uh, part of our little thing we got going on here. And so... Uh, what do you say we get to some questions? Yeah, so number one, without a doubt, I just kind of hear your take on it. You know, you designed the templates, so who better to ask? Uh, you know, how do you determine light, moderate, and hard training days? Let's hear the official word. Take it away. Thank you, Nick. So we'll just cut you guys the super real deal here that in science and in, in reality, hard cutoffs are usually man-made constructions. It, it, are, is there such a thing really as a light workout or a moderate workout as a hard workout uh, in, in exact finite terms? Not really, it's all estimates. So the first thing we have to say is if you're super worried about it, don't be super worried about it. You're eating a really good diet already and we'll just give you a really quick tip. If you're on a cutting phase and you're doing everything right but you think you may be eating on hard days when it should really be moderate or eating on moderate when it's right, just go down one yeah, and, and you don't have anything to worry about. And if, you're, and if you are losing weight according to plan, but you think you're eating too many hard days, who cares? Enjoy the food. That's it. right? So if you want to err on the side of less, let that happen only if you're not on track with the cutting stuff. But if you're on track with the cutting stuff, then uh, you, know, you can just do what you have been doing. That being said, we do have some really good tips for hard, moderate, and light biggest factor is they're volume based. They're not intensity based. Yeah, that's a big one. Huge one. So if you if you do a one rep max in a squat, you show up, you warm up, take 15 minutes to warm up, hit a huge one RM lift. That's as intense as it gets. But the total volume, the amount of work you're doing really isn't that much. It's one lift, right? Are you going to break out in a huge sweat? No way. Are you going to be breathing heavy a lot? No way. How many calories are you going to be burning? Not many. How much carbohydrate are you burning from your muscle stores of glycogen? Not much. And remember, those light, hard days uh, and moderate days, they vary mostly in how much carbohydrate you're eating. So do you really need to refuel tons of carbs when you barely burned any with a very high intensity but low volume effort? The answer is probably not. I think that's a big thing to touch on is think of it in terms of total calories burned because you're thinking about how much total volume have you done, you know, so yeah, you come in and it's super, super intense, you're doing a one RM, or let's say you're doing, a, you know, a Metcon or a WOD and you're going really hard for 15, 20 minutes, you know, don't get us wrong, that's super hard. I it's mean, very tough. I would probably actually physically die doing it. I can't do that, so I wouldn't <laughs> die because I'd never try it. Yeah, so again, we're not saying that, uh, you know, CrossFit's not hard, we're not dumb enough to ever say that, but, uh, you know, it's super, super intense, but it's for a short duration of time, so the total calories burnt are fairly low, and that's kind of the idea of it. Now, if you're in the gym and you're a weightlifter and you're training for two or three hours and you're doing tons of sets and, you know, you're just, you know, I don't know, how many sets do weightlifters do? Oh, man, 20, 30, 40, et cetera, especially if doubles and triples, and that yeah. stuff starts to really add up. Yeah, and if you're in the gym for hours at a time, if you're in an air-conditioned environment but you find yourself sweating profusely during your workouts and you're breathing heavy all the time, that's an indicator that you're burning lots of calories. So our general recommendation is if it's a 30-minute workout, maybe a 40-minute workout, maybe even if it's pretty tough, that's usually a, a, what we call a light day as far as volume is concerned. If your workout is between an hour and two hours, pretty hard, put some real work in, getting a good sweat going, breathing heavy, that's probably more like a moderate day. Folks, good news, bad news, hard days are hard. That means hours, two hours plus usually of hard training, multiple sets, multiple reps, several Metcons strung together. The CrossFitters that eat for hard days, a lot of times they're high level competitive folks yeah. that train for two, three, sometimes four hours a day. That is what hard eating, if you ever look at the hard template that you've got, 
Oh my God, where are all those carbs going to go? Well, if you train for hours and hours, they're going to go to all the right places. If you say, oh, I felt like I trained really hard for 15 minutes and I'm going to eat for the hard day, you're going to quickly find that your body composition doesn't respond very well. You're going to feel super stuffed and full even on a cut. You're going to start to think, man, am I really eating for my workouts? And the answer is probably going to be no. I think that's a really good point in that, uh, you know, so the training templates are set up, you know, like one to ten sets is light. And this is working sets, uh, you know, not counting. Right warm ups and stuff. Yeah, not counting warm ups. So this is just just working sets. You know, eleven through twenty is like you know moderate. Twenty plus is uh, you know hard. But on the female physique templates, it's pretty easy to get over twenty working mm -hmm. sets. And so you know something I've seen in the, in the clients group. We know so you know they're trying to follow things to the T. You know as laid out. But if you're not seeing the results using the hard days, yes, technically speaking, you know let's say you're doing twenty two, twenty five, even. 30, you know, working sets. And a lot of people have success on the hard days with those. Yep. But for those that don't, ramp it down. Yep. So if you're doing mostly hard days and you notice that fat loss is pretty tough and you have to start moving into the next cut, and listen, there is a bit of an intuitive perspective of this. If the carbs are stuffing you and you feel like you're eating a ton of food, you get that sensation on a cut where you're like, I feel like this is way too much food for a cut, go down to the moderate one. And then when you find that you're training between, you know, one hour and one hour and 30 minutes, it's lots of sets. It's what the hard set says. But when you're eating for moderate, you don't feel stuffed and your fat loss is going great. I think that's a really good thing to just stick to moderate. So use your own best judgment sometimes because they're templates. We can't give exact figures. We have to do these kinds of manual cutoffs. If you hire one of our phenomenal RP coaches, we have to have to think about that stuff again. We will customize your diet exactly to how you feel, to how everything is responding, to keep you on track. You don't have to think about a single thing. But for the templates, use your best judgment. If you feel like you're getting stuffed to a brim and you think, oh, maybe you know I'm close to the 20 sets, but maybe it's not exactly hard, go down to moderate. And if you're feeling totally starved, totally deprived, and your weight loss is even faster than it should be, or it's like four pounds a week, maybe you ought to eat a bit more food. Yeah, slide back. Or even, you know, maybe if you're massing, you kind of err on the side of being... On the higher end. Oh, no. Totally. Yeah, yeah, so totally. if you're massing, put some hard days in there. Eat some eat some good food, and you'll probably see very good results. Yeah. Um, I think it covers that pretty well. Uh, I think another one in, was... So on the new templates, you know, it's like base, cut one, cut two, cut three. You know, uh, and then there's the built-in maintenance tabs. And someone asked, well, what do you do after you get to the quote-unquote... Uh, new base? Yeah, that's a really good question. What do you do when you hit the new base? The new base is something we designed to make sure that our RP clients could have a normal, good training diet to sustain the losses in fat or the gains in muscle that they've had and to continue to eat well and train hard and see good results for anywhere between the several months it takes for your body to resensitize to do another mass phase or another cutting phase if you want or as long as you want. You could spend years in a new base, as, forever. It's just a really good, solid, basic nutrition for performance and body comp diet. If you want to do another cutting phase in a couple of months, then you switch back to another cutting phase, or you can reuse your old templates if you're about the same weight, uh, or buy new ones. But the new base, when I say, how long should I stay in it? As long as you want, between several months that it would take for a diet break until your next diet, or for forever. So the cool thing is, if you buy one of the templates, that's a product that's potentially going to last you months and months and maybe even longer. So the short answer there is, what do you do after the new base? Well, it depends on the person's goal. You can just hang out there really as long as you want, or you can, you know, uh, start dieting start again. Start going or, on a cut or a mass, whatever. Yeah, you know, I don't get to get a set of mass templates and, you know, start gaining weight. So to answer that question, it uh, really depends on the person's goal. Yeah, after I finish the new base, I like to leave all of civilization behind, go live in Alaska by myself for a while, and really just find myself again. You know, I think everyone needs to do that. <laughs> Nick, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts are uh, moving on to number three. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> Someone touched on, uh, you know, the, the role of genetics in, uh, I guess, probably just in relation to, let's just say diet. I'll just take this one right off. The role of genetics is until they have gene doping, you can't do anything about it. That's right. So the answer is do your best. Yep. Do genetics play a role in how fine, how big you get? Yes, they play a big role in how jacked you can be. However, unless you have the absolute worst genetics of all time, you can alter your physique to a radical extent. Your two big weapons, consistency and time. 
you can beat a lot of people who have good genetics by outworking them, not having a harder workout any one time with the old high school, outwork the other team kind of stuff, but I'm talking about showing up day in after day, being consistent with it, enjoying it, loving it, making it a hobby that you're really passionate about. After years and years, you're going to be leaner and more jacked than most people with good genetics. So unless you have the worst genetics of all time, which you can, and then you pick another hobby or something like that, or just do it for the fun of it, you can. Uh, you, there's no way to beat your genetics. But the thing is, it's a summative effect. So your hard work and your consistency and dedication for your whatever genetics you have, you're going to be able to outgrow and outlean and outperform most people with good genetics that don't put in as much work. And if you're worried about other people and their genetics, don't. Just take care of yourself and whatever you have, you find out. Another really cool thing, and uh, one of our friends, Greg Knuckles, is really big on this idea, is that uh, the genetics for how adaptable you are are different than the genetics for initial states. So you can start pretty jacked and lean, but training and diet don't really have as much of an effect on you as someone who thought your progress isn't that great. But if you start not so jacked and not so lean, but your adaptation genetics are great, sometimes they're very much independent from your initial state genetics, you can work and work and slowly and surely you get better and better and better until you're unbelievable. So so don't assume you don't have good genetics. Follow your hobby, enjoy the process, go where it will. We promise you'll get much better, and hey, you may get much, much better. A quick note on that, I think it's just important to touch on, uh, you know, some people, some people might lose, even if they're the same weight using the same template, some people might lose weight on the base, some people might lose on cut one, some people might lose on, you know, cut two. You know, some people, you know, may not lose a lot until, you know, they get to the cut three or something. And again, that's kind of the role, you know, genetics would play. Yeah. Like. If you're comparing yourself to someone else, you know, don't. Don't. It's yeah. pointless. Take care of yourself. Do your best. And you will you encounter some problems and some difficulties? You bet everyone does. Everyone does on their journey. But after a long while of cranking it, you're going to have awesome results that you're really happy about. And if you want even more results, keep cranking. That's the only answer. Until gene doping comes around, and then it's going to be a real party. Because I'm, I'm going to splice myself with like a rhinoceros or something. I want to look like Bebop and Rock and Rocksteady. Which one's the rhino and which one's the warthog or whatever? Bebop, Rocksteady. Chad, do you know? The rhino sounds more like Rocksteady. Yeah, but it's a really just a crass assumption on your end when you think about it. Yeah. Reckless. All right, so uh, last one, uh, you know, someone touched on. Uh, you had actually just mentioned in the last one, uh, you know, uh, Greg Knuckles. Well, someone just mentioned an article by him. And him again. Can't skip Greg, man. Uh, yeah, someone touched on uh, you know uh, the role of HMB as a supplement, so I'll let you take that. Yeah, so you know the, most of the studies on HMB say that it has some potential to be a mildly effective supplement. It's a downstream metabolite of leucine, and it could have some effects on uh, sparing muscle during uh, otherwise catabolic or muscle burning times. That it could have some form as an anabolic trigger. Most of the studies on HMB are nothing to write home about. Uh, taking into account the file drawer effect, which is the idea that researchers sometimes don't publish studies that don't show really cool effects, especially when they're sponsored by supplement companies. Um, HMB is nothing to get too super excited about. I've personally taken HMB, a lot of my clients have back in my supplement days, and I, I, didn't, I completely honestly didn't notice a thing. Um, and, you know, does it work? If it does, it's a very mild enhancement. So if you've got all your nutrient timing already in place, you're taking creatine, whey protein, casein, all the supplements that definitely work. And of course, calories and macros are in order. You might be able to experiment with HMB, particularly during cutting phases. There are some studies that recently came out saying HMB is better than anabolic steroids. I'll let you judge for yourself whether or not you think those studies are legit. My first <laughs> opinion is that absolutely not. So I wouldn't get too excited about anything that making fantastical claims. All the other studies don't make nearly as fantastical claims. There will be studies in the future that, again, make much more, more normal claims for HMB. Not a supplement to get too excited about yet. More questions than answers at this point, but uh, for sure it's not magic. And if you want to integrate it, make sure you're doing everything else right first. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, it's a pretty good answer. Remember, supplements just play a you know, tiny role, relatively minor role in the grand scheme of things. So uh, you know, make sure everything else is in line first. But uh, I guess to wrap things up, man. Uh, we just want to say you know thank you to all the RP clients out there and. Uh, 20K is a pretty cool number, so you know maybe we can do this again when it hits you know 25 or 30. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much.